everyone, my name is Paul Third, and this week I'm going to be diving into the Jason Joshua God Particle. Yes, many of you guys have been asking me to do this plugin for a long time, and I decided to take my time because I genuinely do believe that the reviews so far that I've seen haven't done this plugin justice because people haven't went to the effort of understanding the man behind the plugin as well as the plugin itself. Now, for anybody that hasn't done the research or know Jason Joshua, right, the guy's a 15-time Grammy winner, and he's very, very, very clever, right? This guy isn't a dunce, right? You don't win 15 Grammys just like being a guy that can just twiddle a few faders and stuff, right? He does a lot of stuff in the box, and this guy knows his plugins. And that's why in this plugin, you've got multiband compression, you've got multiband saturation, multiband width or widener or an imager and there's something else it might be i think there's something to do with transients as well there's a limiter but know what we'll okay let's just deal with the limiter first because i want to get the limiter out of the way don't use the limiter <laughs> i know i know i'm trying to be objective as possible i did say but it's not something that you should actually use and print track with as you can see it adds a crap ton of saturation jason himself has said it's what he calls a crunchy limiter basically it's, in, it's a saturated limiter with the crap ton of aliasing in it and it also adds quite a bit of cpu as well look let's just cut the bullshit right you know i don't like aliasing but i might not bother you it's got a sim that's a crunchy limiter but jason has said in interviews in the mix with the masters interview anyway that he never ever ever prints with a limiter on it's just something to check you he might mix through it give him an idea how it's going to sim but he never ever ever prints with a limiter this plugin is not a mastering tool. Many people have tried to use it as a mastering tool. It's not. It's a mix bus tool. It's a mixer's tool. So just to get that out of the way, the limiter is just a tool you can use. It's an added little option. But the main sound of this tool isn't in the limiter. Just be very wary of that. Now, in terms of using this plugin, it is genuinely as simple as any plugin I've ever used. Left-hand side you've got an input gain stage. It's telling you, the little green bar, hit it around here. This is how the plugin wants to be hit. Feed it with the right input level. Then to the right-hand side of that, you've got your EQs. Low, mid, high. Low shelf, wide, mid, bell, and a high shelf. Now, you can use these EQs as like tonal options. However, the multiband compressor wants to be fed a certain way, and that's what the EQs are for. It's just to ensure that you're hitting those targets. So you've got a low shelf, mid, bell, and a high shelf, and if you use and tweak them, it'll be an easy way of being able to hit the multiband compressor the right way. Many people have tried to copy the kind of Ozone 4 kind of presets that Jason, this is based on. Right? So for anybody that doesn't know, all of this started with a mix bus preset that Jason had with Isotope Ozone. I think it was Ozone 4. Right, okay, I'll, start, I'll try and stay in the middle. So on the sides, these are like the presets that he shared on Instagram. I don't know when he did it, maybe a couple of years ago. And these are the settings for the multiband compressor, the multiband imager, the multiband saturation, and other things as well. And he took all of that and stuck it into a plugin, tweaked it, optimized it, and we've got the God particle. And to me, one of the main reasons why many reviews haven't really done this plugin justice is because people have stuck this plugin on a mix that is already finished. Right? So think about what's going on underneath the hood. Right? There's multiband imaging, there's like widening or whatever going on. Right, are you, do you have any widening on this mix? Yeah, I've got Acoustica Lift 3 with adding in some width. Right, take that off. And then, right, compression. Have I already got compression on this? Yes, I'm using the Arturia, the Neve 33609. Take that off. Like, God Particle genuinely replaced two plugins that I always mix through. I love the Neve 33609 for that kind of depth that it adds. And the more you hit it on the instrument bus, you can add more of that depth. The multiband compression in God Particle does it, and I prefer it and it's all in one plugin. But then what I noticed was then the targets weren't hitting right, because I've taken, mainly because I took the compressor off. And then I looked at the mid-band of like the compressor section, and I was like, right, okay, it's now hitting too far now. I'll bring down the mids a bit. But then I wasn't really simding the way that I wanted it to. And then I was tweaking with it, and I was playing with it, and I actually sat with it for like a good half an hour. And what I noticed was when I brought the mids back up to zero, and I played with the vocal, because I knew that the vocal was main, the main thing being detected by the mid-band, I just tweaked the vocal. And then I got the vocal to a point where it was sitting just right. It was in the green. Honestly, it's just like the right amount of multiband compression, and it just sits right. 
And, you know, I was getting a little bit worried because I was like, obviously, you know, the way I feel about saturation and stuff. And many people have been like, yeah, it's a color box and stuff. It's not really as much as a color box as what many people think. Now, for example, right here is a 1K sign tone. Now, as you can see, it's just adding um, two orders of odd harmonics. And that second order of odd harmonic is barely audible. Actually, here is a full sweep running through the plugin at minus 6 dBFS. And as you can see, that main first third order harmonic, that's the one that's really audible. The second one is, is really hardly audible. So it's not adding as much saturation as you think. It's just enough. It's just enough to give you a little bit of extra added color, just to give you a little bit, maybe more of that, what people class as that analog feel. However, however, <laughs> the aliasing, <laughs> ding, 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 the aliasing bell is going off because obviously, as you can see, there is very strong aliasing. And when you play the sweep back, you can hear the aliasing on the tail as well. So it is there and it is audible. And due to the very steep filter that God Particles got just like after like 21, 22K or whatever it is, when you times two oversample it, all the aliasing disappears. Well, it doesn't disappear, but it's inaudible. And this is where I kind of get to the part of the video where I have a little bit of a bugbear, <laughs> which is the fact that there is no times two oversampling, right? I understand why they did it, because this plugin, on my i9 anyway, takes about 6 to 7 percent CPU. However, 6 to 7 percent for like a multiband compressor, widener, like um, transient enhancement, like multiband saturation, and like the EQs as well, which actually acts as a color EQ as well, because when you've got that on and you use the EQ with it, it reacts to the harmonics as well. So the harmonics work in tandem with the EQ. As well. So 6 to 7% for a plugin that's doing all of that isn't too bad. However, I understand why they didn't do the times two linear phase oversampling option is because <laughs> when you do, it is like 15 to like 19%. Some, like, that's worst case scenario. I'd say between 15 to 17% CPU. However, it's, it kind of spreads over the cores pretty well in Pro Tools. And that is in Pro Tools as well. We all know that Pro Tools is pretty shit for CPU. And actually in my mix, I managed to get away with the times two oversampling via Meta plugin and it's not crashing out on me and the CPU is handling it. Now, many people may be like, like that's you shouldn't really need to worry about it. Here's the thing. When I did my blind tests, right? Obviously I, I you know it's me as Paul Third. When I did my blind test and I did um the God particle at 48k and then the God particle at 48k times two FIR so linear phase oversampling, and I was listening back and forth, I couldn't consistently pass the blind test. I couldn't consistently pass a triple blind test. And that is mainly because the difference is really in the high end. I think when I, I'm pretty sure I'd done a null, and when I'd done the null on my single, it was like from, I think it was like maybe from 7K onwards, and only certain parts are really audible, but you can hear it. And when I was listening to a part of the vocal that was just like a little bit toppy, and then I did the blind test, I could pass it every time. So removing that aliasing, is going to result in something that is audible and to me makes it more super analog because to be honest that's the, the biggest bugbear for me in the market and is calling something super analog when it's it's got a ton of can digital artifacts in it there's audible aliasing in it and i've got to oversample it myself that should be an option in my personal opinion that should be implemented for users like me that are aliasing freaks but can actually hear it an average listener isn't going to hear it but that top end especially when it's on a mix bus and you're looking for high fidelity that extra little sparkle in the top end that little extra bit of airiness that's going to help certain parts of the track and then you could at least give the purchaser the user the option of the cpu i think taking that away um is a little bit limiting and then it makes your marketing a little bit shit but however however that's how they fucking sell plugins these days but Look, that's, that's it, right? I'm not going to provide any audio examples because if I do a bypass and an unbypass and an A-B test and level match it, you're going to hear a difference, but it's not going to allow you to hear the way it was before. The best A-B is to let you hear what I had originally with the compressor on, with the lift three on, with the way that I had the balance of the faders, the tonal balance of the mix. It, com it changed. It didn't completely change, but I did change certain factors of that song. I changed how much bass I added in, the level of the vocal, just certain elements were tweaked and changed. So it did a lot more than what a standard AB would show you. I'll say it again, 15 time Grammy winners 
making plugins to make your life easier. Giving you what took them years and hours upon hours upon hours to like just get right in one plugin. Do I need it? No. Do I want it? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, I want this plugin because I feel that it makes my workflow easier. I understand it. It's helping me with the vocal level. It's giving me that depth that I want. However, however, I will say when I was running it through Doctor, it's extremely slow. Like I actually had to take a photo of the fundamental sweep. <laughs> That's how slow it is and buggy it is in Doctor. It might be a Doctor thing, but I do use Doctor to give me an idea of whether there might be some VST compatibility issues. So I don't know on some DAWs if it might be a little bit slow or it is a doctor thing. So I'm just putting it out there, but in the DAW, it's fine. And that's all that matters. My advice to you is demo it, stick it on a mix that you're currently working on. If you've got compression on there already, take it off. If you've got widening on there, take it off. If you've got saturation on there, take it off. Just let this thing do what it's going to do. Try it out. If it's for you, it's for you. Many people may already have mix bus chains that are very similar to Jason's. And you're not really going to get a benefit out of it. Me personally, I felt I got a benefit out of it for my single. And I'm a bit gutted that the trials away expire today. But I don't know. I emailed them just in case, just to be like, look. Might speak about it on the podcast, maybe. Might speak to Warren about it, you know. Fucking give me the plug in. You got a chance here, Matt. You got a chance here, Matt. But there you go. There is the God particle. Whether it works for you, varies on the genre, varies on your style, varies on your mixing approach, but it's definitely something to try out. And there you have it. My name is Paul Third. Hopefully the next time you see <laughs> you see me, I have it. If not, I may be, I don't know, 90, 80 quid down or whatever. Depends. <laughs> I will try to get it for free. But there you have it. It's not been sponsored. My opinion, as always, my name is Paul Third, and I'll see you again next week. <laughs>